Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Obe and I want to introduce Svetlana. Hi there. She is a physician assistant that is joining our team and so today we get to have a fun conversation with Svetlana and ask her all about herself and she has no idea what questions we're going to ask. None. So I am locked and loaded. Um, this should not be very formal and it should not be all about her training even though we, we will ask some of that. So we're going to keep it informal. So my first question for Svetlana is, what did you eat for dinner last night? <laughs> salad. Okay, that's boring. What kind of salad? Uh, cabbage, apple, carrot. Okay. Seasoned with mayonnaise. Uh, and uh, I don't know this dish in uh, English. It's kind of Russian. Okay. My mom's recipe yeah. made from um, farmer's cheese that I make myself. Yeah. And it's eggs and some potato starch and I Raisins and I bake it. Fun. And so that's a dish separate from the salad. So you had a salad and this. Correct. Okay. Now there's no meat in last night's dish at all? No, I had a dinner. Okay. Lunch. So are you vegan or? No. Okay. All right. I'm not vegan. But you try to eat mostly plant-based is what I'm hearing. Plant-based and some meat or fish Good. on a daily, daily basis. Good. How long have you been interested in your health or taking your health seriously, eating this way? You kind of grew up this way or? I grew up this way. Oh. I grew up this day, I mean this way. Uh, my mother was a physician and she was excellent cook and she taught me how to cook and I've been cooking all my life. I grew up in South Louisiana. We did not do it that way, so good for you. So that was kind of my next question. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Russia, uh, in suburbs of Moscow. Okay. And then I went to med school in Moscow. Yeah. And then worked in Moscow afterwards. And that's where I grew up and lived all my life until I was 36. 36. Mm -hmm. And uh, so tell us a little bit about Russia. All I can picture is it being very cold. There's always snow in the movies. And everybody's always got fluffy hats. Is that is that real life or is that... Is real life during winter? <laughs> okay, so what's summer like in Russia? Because I've never seen summer in Russia. It's always cold. Summer in Russia varies year to year. Uh, as far as I remember, because I've been here many, many years, uh, it can be hot and humid and a lot what, of rains. What does hot mean? Because Texas, we get we get to 110 around no, here. No, not to 110. Um, in Celsius, it would be up to 30, but okay. it's rare. It's in 20s to 25, so it's like 80s to 90 Okay. most of the time. It can get colder. It can get to... 60s in summer. Really? And I recently talked to a friend of mine who we went to that school with, and just a week ago it was snowing in Moscow. A week ago? It's, a week it's, ago. It's May right now. Yeah, a week ago. <laughs> okay, and I thought it was cool this morning when it was like 60s. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so tell me about your move to the United States. How? how what was that like? Was that Stressful? I mean, of course it's stressful, but was it a fun stressful or a, gosh, this is really daunting? Um, I guess it was a mixture. Uh, good stress and bad stress. Um, excited about new opportunities here. Uh, sad part was like, I'm probably not going to see my friends uh, for the most part, but our whole family united here. Yeah. My cousin, my um, distant relatives, and we were all spread out in Russia, so yeah. that was big fun. Yeah. So, what what prompted the move to the U.S.? Combination of factors. Yeah. Uh, it was during Perestroika. During what? Perestroika. What? Perestroika. <laughs> I think that in English it's the same. Basically, it's <laughs> moving from socialism to capitalism. Okay. So that was a huge change in Russia. In Russia, ah, so it's okay. Historica. and I don't think that word was translated to English. Oh. As far as I know, it's kept the same. Oh, okay. Um, I'm learning so much. Yeah, it was mo mostly political reasons. Yeah. Um, and so the opportunity came up to move, and you guys jumped on it, and actually yeah. brought family together. Yeah. when coming to the United States. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. So you were a physician in Russia and unfortunately had to kind of start over in the U.S. So yeah. what was that transition like? 
it was a stepwise transition. So when we moved to US, my daughter was seven months old. And I'm like, if I go in med medical field, like a physician route, I'm not going to see her growing up. No. And she was priority for me. Um, and still is. And still is. Mm -hmm. So I decided, but I still wanted to do something to help. Mm -hmm. So the uh, another uh, interest of mine was psych psychology. Okay. And I decided to pursue a career of psychotherapist and children psychotherapist. Yeah. So I took TOEFL, that is requirement for English for foreigners. Uh, the other prerequisites already were done because of the med school, and I applied to JFK University. Uh, was accepted and started to. Uh, learned the psychotherapy and I loved it. Uh, the good thing was that I could do it uh, part time. JFK, this was in California? Yep. Okay. I think of JFK in the airport in New oh, York. Oh, no, it's JFK University. Okay. Sorry. Got it. Got it. No, you said it right. I just yeah. only think of JFK. And yeah. So I could do it at my workforce. pace. So it was part time student, taking as many classes as, as I uh, can and still a <coughs> point of time for my daughter. Mm hmm. And then it happened that uh, I could not go to that school anymore because um, I got divorced. Oh. So I had to get on my own feet uh, and I started to work, whatever first work I could find. And that was a position at um, the local hospital, county mm -hmm. hospital and pathology lab. Oh, fun. So, so preparing uh, slides and stuff? Uh, in a dark actually, room? <laughs> initially, no. Initially, it was a transcriptionist. Oh, okay. I did that for a while, too. <laughs> for pathologists. Yeah. So I started with that, then I started to prep pop smear slides, and then I thought to myself, I cannot do it all my life. Yeah. My brain needs much more stimulation, and I started to research what else can I do. Mm -hmm. And I found out about physician assistant. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. That would perfectly fit me. I had to take prerequisites again, uh, so it took me... Even before PA school? Before, before oh, PA school, man. I had to take prerequisites because um, I graduated but, from med school more than five years ago. Oh, goodness, so that's right. not good enough for PA school? Yeah, oh, it's wow. not good enough. I'm sorry. So it took me about a year and a half to finish all the prerequisites because I still had to work. Right. And then I just uh, got in PA school right away. On the first uh, application and graduated from PA school and started to work right away. Very good. Was it, so is it easier the second go round going back to all the med school classes and stuff? Well, it's not not completely easy. It was not this okay. It still was I guess a lot also of work. because it's different language too, right? Language so was not no language was not a problem. Okay. At that point, already it did not matter whether it's English or Russian. Wow. But you still need to go through anatomy and physiology on high level and, yeah. uh, you know, you don't use it much, you forget it, you don't use it, you yeah. it. So, again, going through all these steps, the clinical part probably was easier than for other because my brain is already, already done it. trained in this uh, way of processing and using the information. How long were you a physician in Russia before you moved? About five years. Okay, so you just got a little, a little bit for all that work you put in, um, mm -hmm. and then of course it's still benefiting you today in your practice. All the knowledge you learned then, interesting. Um, how does Russian medical school compare to physician assistant? Do you feel like training is kind of the same, or didactic is different? Like how they, or knowledge is knowledge, just sitting behind a book is no different. Mm -hmm. Training is different in terms of, for example, how we take exams. I don't know how, well, it's a lot of multiple choice here. Mm -hmm. There was no multiple choice there. It's always essay and it mostly um, oral exam. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's written, but mostly oral. And you have no idea what you're going to be asked. I mean, you have a list of questions. Right. And we had a so-called ticket. So you uh, kind of pick randomly a piece of paper with the questions. Oh. That's daunting. <laughs> and you have, Choose your poison. <laughs> and you have a certain amount of time to sit down, think about it, prepare it, and then present. Wow. 
That sounds stressful, but that actually sounds like you would have a better understanding or need to have a better understanding of the topic exactly. instead of just choosing A, B, C, or D because exactly. um, I never liked multiple choice. That was yeah. not my, my forte. And another thing is that you go from high school straight to medical school. There's no, there's no college. Is it four years? No, it's six years. Six years. But first two years, it's a lot of uh, like science and not only science. There's some political subjects as well, like... Uh, History of the Communist Party. And Interesting. First year. And Interesting. Like a lot of taking a lot of notes. And, Interesting. Uh, but also science like physics and different kinds of chemistry. Yeah. And English, by the way. Oh, really? But medical English. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What about, um, so how did you get into functional medicine? Because clearly you're very invested and love functional medicine. Love it. So how did you find it? Or how by did they accident. find you? No, I no, I found them. <laughs> it was a lucky accident. Yeah. Um, one of my passions is nutrition, and I listened to YouTube presentations and came across David Asprey. Really? Okay. And then he was interviewing uh, Mark Hyman. Yeah. And they mentioned functional medicine. I'm like, what is like this? That term. <laughs> Say exactly. that again. What okay. is this? So I of course go to Google found out what's functional medicine, I'm like, wow, oh, that's what actually I'm trying to do, not knowing it. Right. Because I'm like, vitamins and other supplements, but Certainly in the dark. Certainly there's way, besides yeah. prescriptions. Yeah, in the dark way. And I also liked to help my patients, because I was in the criminology mm -hmm. doing a lot of diabetes, like help my patients with diet, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why I was watching uh, nutrition interviews on the YouTube. Uh, and then I'm like, okay, I want to know more, and I want to get formal education. Mm -hmm. And I started to look at... And you had already been a PA by this point? Correct. About how long? Um, about 10 years. Okay. Okay, so you had plenty of experience under your belt, plenty of experience in the U.S. medical system. I don't know how Russia is, but U.S. medical system of 10-minute doctor visits, prescription after prescription, people not making behavioral changes. Correct. Okay. And so, go on. So I found two options, uh, Functional Medicine University mm -hmm. and Institute of Functional Medicine. Mm -hmm. I had to choose Functional Medicine University. Mm -hmm. um, because at that time, of, uh, at least, there was no option of online training. Yeah. And I couldn't take time off. And it's uh, expensive to both take the time and off and take the courses correct, and, and do the hotels. Absolutely. Financially, I could not afford yeah. it. I was halfway. I had to do half my training um, in person. And then um, about halfway is when they started offering the live. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, and, I, and I love the in-persons. The in-persons are so great because you get to meet with different people, talk to the vendors and everything. They are better, but wow, what an expense between the air travel and the hotel and, and stuff. Yeah. Correct. And online, you get to sit there in your pajamas and watch yeah. and learn. It's awesome. And you can yeah. type and chat to all these professionals. And <laughs> yeah, and school support was great. You can ask any question and they yeah. get back to you. Um, within 24 hours, yep. basically. Yep. Okay. So I finished the Functional Medicine University? December uh, 2017. Okay. Okay. And uh, so got plenty of training, got plenty of knowledge. I don't think anybody at this point is questioning that. You've been to med school. You've been to PA school. You haven't done it twice. Right, no more than me at this point, and um, been doing functional medicine for several years, PA for several years, physician for several years, and uh, and she still looks young. Can you believe that? Um, uh, so, what is? Tell me about one of the first success stories in functional medicine that you can remember that was like, oh my gosh, this is real. Like I already believed in it, but now I actually like got to see it. Anything come to mind? Success meaning diagnosing or success meaning treatment? Yeah, or? something where in the if you had not known what you had known, would have failed that patient. Not necessarily failed that patient, but that patient would have been stuck on a proton pump inhibitor for years, whereas you reversed it and got them off of it or something like that. Actually, I started with more interesting situation. Oh, yes. we like interesting. So I was seeing for follow-up a patient who was referred to my supervising physician as endocrinologist yeah. to work up for adrenals mm -hmm. because she was dead all the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting her history and symptoms and I'm like, I don't think you have adrenals. 
And a few days later, I'm listening to the podcast talking about mold mm. and Dr. Schumacher. <laughs> and I'm listening to the presentation. I'm like, this is my patient. Yep. Oh, my God. Uh, the next question is, okay, how am I going to treat her? How am I going to diagnose Now what? <laughs> now what? So I'm asking Dr. Salam, and nobody knows what it is and what to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. This so, before she knew me and us. Oh, way before. <laughs> Then I found Shumika Chronicle. Okay, it's treated with Questron. Let's try uh-huh. it. And she's all forward. Let's do it. Let's do it. So I didn't know about you need to do liver support and diet change and so forth. So we started Questron. How'd that go? <sighs> I made it her much, much worse. Yeah. <laughs> Got to do things in order, guys. And it was like full dose. Yeah. And I didn't know yeah. about sensitivity and all the things. So uh, that sounds fun. She tried a couple of times. She developed food sensitivity, so we had to stop. And I'm like, you need to find somebody who knows how to do it. Yeah, you need a mold literate person, but a mold literate person. I was like, uh, I want to help, but I'm not sure. How. Just a student. Mm-hmm. Just about to become a student. Mm-hmm. And it m- prompted me even more to do it. So that was my first patient. Wow. And there's nothing more defeating than having enough idea that you know you can help this person, you know someone can, yep. and you've, you've started them down the right path, but there's just the inability to help someone, that'll, that'll drive That was you. frustrating. Yeah. That was very frustrating. I know what it is, I just don't know how to help. Did you ever hear back from her later, years, anything? Okay, so she's helped you, you drive. So we're sorry, we hope you got the help you needed. If you're watching this video, whoever you are, And if you haven't, we now know how to treat mold really well. So um, hopefully you're not still sick, whoever's out there. Um, Okay, so let's change gears a little bit and and tell us, what do you like to do in your free time? When you're not studying and learning about mold and Lyme and... I like to cook and at the same time, listen to podcasts. (laughs) So more training. (laughs) More training. Uh, I mean, it's never enough. Right. It's never never enough. enough. It is a lifelong learning. And as soon as we learn something, they come out with something else, and we learn that. Yeah, too. it's constantly evolving. Um, I like to travel. I like mm-hmm. to ski. I like to bike. Snow ski, water ski. Snow ski. Okay. Have you water skied? Tried once in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did try it. Okay. Uh, but snow ski, whether it's uh, downhill or cross country, both. Cross country skiing is hard work. Only done it once. That was hard. That was very work. common in Russia. Right, I bet. <laughs> it's always snowing every time I look. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was peeing during winter. Yeah. You have to do it. I, I'll, I'll, I'll think about that. Okay. What, what, what is the coolest place in the whole idea of travel? What's the coolest place you've been to that you just think it's all inspiring and, and you would go back any day if you could? Ooh. Probably Taiwan. Taiwan, really? Why? What was in Taiwan that was It just... was extremely peaceful and yeah. easy, and that's where I tried to take a water ski. Oh! <laughs> um, Taiwan. I, I have to say, I didn't expect that answer. Okay. Singapore also was interesting, but it was too hot and too humid. Says the Russian who's used to <laughs> snow. Um, Must have been 60 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> I loved Prague a lot. Yeah. A beautiful, beautiful city, city. Are you more of the natural beauty or the human architecture beauty or a little bit Probably of... Probably nature. Yeah? Nature is more. Yeah. So mountains and, and, and sea. All right. I'm scared uh, of forests though now. Because what's that? I'm scared of going to forest now. Why? Dicks everywhere. Oh, because of Lyme. Yeah, that's reasonable. That's reasonable. Okay. But if you have a functioning immune system, you should be more protected. And we know about it, and that's that's half the battle. Yeah. Um, do you have any animals? Yes, I do. What kind of animals? Dogs. How many? Well, it used to be two. One of them now lives with my daughter, and oh. another one is with me. Okay. What kind of dog? Mo- uh, the one that lives with me is her name is Mia. She is yeah. an Italian Greyhound. Italian Greyhound. So tall and lean. No, she's mini Greyhound. Mini Greyhound, yes. really? Yeah. Does it still? Does she still same. look just like your greyhound? Just exactly. Small. Same shape, really? just miniature. 
Now, I hear greyhounds, despite being really fast, they're actually kind of lazy dogs, aren't they? Or am I mixing dogs up? What do you mean by lazy? I mean, they, they actually just like to lay around. They're actually pretty docile and calm. And that you depends. always think of them as racing, but they're not really... It depends on the age of the dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's still like with children, you know. Yeah. When they're young, they like to run around. Yeah, they do. And as we grow up... We like to sit down. They're like, yeah. oh, like this. Okay, so last question. You, you've been great so far, and this question is going to come out of left field, so let's see what the answer is. Take a moment to think if you need to, okay? What is your spirit animal? I think it's a bull. Bull? <laughs> okay, so why a bull? I like it, all right? Because you see red all the time. Is that what it is? Um, uh, would your husband agree that you're a bull? I didn't ask him. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, because um, both they work a lot and I'm kind of workaholic. Okay. And they're determined, they're stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> and I see a lot of determination in my life. Yeah, I do too. In professional right. life. Okay, for example, I wanted to go to a certain medical school in Russia and I got there on my uh, fourth time because I wanted to go there and only there. Mm -hmm. um, here, when we decided to move to Austin, I said, I'm gonna move only when I find the work that I like. And it must be functional medicine. So I did my search and I found you. Uh, there weren't many options in Austin. <laughs> and after you interviewed me, I'm like, I like we think alike, and I see how the practice work, and I want to work here. Yeah, so a little backstory behind that. She had contacted me, I guess right after, or something around when we had already hired Mimi, yep. and then um, you had reached out again because you were going to be in Austin, and um, I said, sure, I've got 15 minutes, and uh, I didn't think anything of it. We weren't, we weren't really looking to hire anyone, but I thought, eh, what's, what's 15 minutes? Might as well meet someone. And um, so like an hour and a half later, we we're still talking like, okay, I actually have things I need to do. And then, um, and yeah, it was only what, six months later or so when you started here? Yeah, so you interviewed me in met? September and I started uh, in, March. in March. So yeah, about six months and here we are. So Svetlana is seeing patients at our practice and uh, doing well, she's growing. So hopefully this, this interview of sorts Helps you learn a little bit about her. Um, is there anything else you want people to know about you other than being a bull? <laughs> <laughs> She's an awful tame bull. <laughs> um, I don't know. Wonderful. People, people Wonderful. can ask me when they come. That's right. Sign up. Uh, give, us our, give our practice a call if you want to sign up to meet Svetlana. Uh, our phone number and everything's on the website. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and meeting Svetlana. Leave her a comment or a suggestion or anything online, and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.